So the biggest problem that SAP faces is, is nothing to do with the technology, all to do with their screwed up messaging. That's it. That's all anybody needs to <coughs> understand. But <coughs> excuse me, because <coughs> if they can't explain what they really mean to people like you and us, there is no earthly possibility of being able to explain it to the ordinary, ordinary buyer. Mm, yep. And so, how would you, Dennis? How would you? <coughs> excuse me. Go on. Uh, with the 360 announcement, how would you classify that in terms of SAP's messaging challenges? Can somebody tell me what it means? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's it's really that simple. Right. Okay. And it's like a, it's like I was trying to explain to Jim last night. You've got a company that, on the one hand, <coughs> are you getting my cold? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I've been six okay. six feet away from you. For yeah. Um, <clears throat> on the one hand, you've got a company that solves some really, really big and very, very interesting, dare I say, fascinating problems, which is wonderful. It has um, a group of companies, maybe two, four thousand throughout the world, where it's solving 60, 70 percent of the problems, but a huge amount of customization. And then it's got a hundred and some thousand customers for whom things can be productized one hopes, but are going to need an ecosystem around them, okay? And how do you actually bring all of those, all of those three messages together in such a way <coughs> excuse me, that it makes sense? They don't know. They, they really don't know how to do that. I mean, they seem to start from the point, we're the number one in everything that they do, and that's supposed to be a starting point that I can put my hands around. I really don't care if they're number one. I don't think customers care if they're number one. What customers want the solutions. Well, I would make the argument that saying <coughs> that saying you're number one is actually dangerous in many cases because what it does is it prevents you from doing an accurate assessment of where you actually stand. Like mobile, for example, I hear a lot about leadership in mobile. Yep. What I'd rather hear is here's where we are. We have a really long way to go, right? And that's the danger of getting too excited about the steps that you've taken. Yep. So, uh, Leo, you, you came here with an interesting agenda because your firm has made some significant investments in by design yep. in terms of resources and commitment. You've had a lot of questions around SAP cloud and by design. Did you get any of those answered this week or was it a, a futile search? Oh, I think I, I think we had some answers. I think we had a lot of improvement done. Again, I'm not saying the message here has been addressed and is, is clear about cloud strategy. Excuse I just me, think I it's better. Go on, carry on. I, I just think it's better than how, where we were. If I look back, Sapphire, right, how the message on cloud was delivered, and I'm looking for a perspective by design, I, I got really disappointed because I didn't hear anything about it. Um, so from that point on, we started this investigation saying, what's going on? I mean, what, is, what, what is next for by design? What is the place of by design in this strategy? So in all these this months, right, we went to the uh, influencer su uh, summit. Um, there was work to be done in the cloud. And just getting here and hearing by design. And remember when the, there was the four pillars of, of, of cloud in the strategy, right? right? Now they're talking about five. And there is a fifth one. And you can see on the slide by design somewhere well pre represented. What's the one sweet uh, Yeah, feet? business, right? Uh, I don't know how it's called. Uh, I got it now. The suite? Yeah, the suite, right? Yeah. The suite. Okay. But, but it represents the suite. And uh, again, it's not extremely... The w it's not the way I, w I wanted to position by design it still, because I believe it's a central point to the cloud strategy. But having it presented, talked about uh, from uh, Jim, from Bill, um, I think uh, it's an improvement. And we we'll have to recognize that. You know what I, I find amusing <coughs> is when uh, SAP executive board members have talked about by design lately, they, they almost talk about the great sales like they're almost surprised. Like It's almost like they're like, really, this is selling this well? I guess we should keep going with it. Yeah. That was certainly the view we heard from Lars Dahlgaard in several situations was, you know, yeah, I was a little skeptical of a suite because he's not a suite guy. He's a line of business cloud guy. He's sitting there and he's like, well, this stuff sells, so I, we're going to keep selling it. Yeah. That seems to be the view on by design, right? Well, yeah. that's all very well. But if 
they want to be serious about their surround strategy with all the global companies, and if they want to be a credible player in the mid-market, then a thousand or whatever it is implementation certainly doesn't even, I mean, doesn't even scratch the surface, does it, right? So, you know, when they talked about my customers, my money, my this and that and the other, I'd, my problems. I, well, I'd, 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 I just thought it was a joke, right? Yeah. Because, because in order to play the line of business game, you've got to be at least in the top three best in class, and they, and they weren't, right? And um, the good news is, that for me at least, is that with finance on demand, is that they finally understood that A, it's got to remain as a single code base, because it was going to be two, now it's back to one, um, as between what they're doing line of business and business suite. But also that the um, finance on demand is effectively a business platform, it's a plug-in architecture. And I really, really like that, because that's going to appeal to a lot of folk who, who want choice, you know, do I want SAP CRM or do I want Salesforce, right? Or if you're going to use um, uh, uh, finance on demand as a, as a cloud-based finance system, what am I going to do about billing, right? I can go billing.com, Zora, I can do something else, I can build my own, whatever it is that I need to do. I like that idea a great deal. And do you think that they've got to a level where they can, they can integrate tightly with, the, with these other no, systems? No, 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 it shouldn't be tightly integrated, it should be loosely integrated. I wouldn't want it tightly integrated. Now, you know, what do we mean here? And uh, When I spoke with uh, Zinno about this, he said, we're not going to be able to pick up their processes, but we can pick up the data. And that's good news, because if you think about it, if I've got a sales, uh, a sales rep, one of the things I might want him to do is to go debt collecting, mm -hmm. right? But he'll be concerned about CRM data. Well, if I can mash my CRM data into the, with the finance data, he's, he's, got a, he's got something he can look at. And the dashboards that I've seen look as though they're going to allow for that fairly well. So, you know, from that standpoint, I don't think I've got terribly many problems. Interesting. Wow. Why do you? Now, I'm just trying to understand uh, that um, if it's just data, then there's a lot of custom development and one. No, 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 there isn't. No, there isn't. No? No, no, there shouldn't be because if all you're doing is exposing data back into dashboards, that shouldn't mm -hmm. mean the custom development at all. I'm trying to wrap my head around this, but this is interesting. Well, it, it, let's put it this way, if they get the platform right, then it doesn't mean a lot of, of that stuff because that's already, uh, I mean, there are plenty of other examples where that doesn't happen. I mean, the force.com platform, yes, it's a platform, yes, you create custom objects, but it's not a big ask. Right. And, um, you know, there are, there are many, many companies out there doing development on that platform, providing, exposing data from Salesforce into their own little applications, and they're throwing those apps out like that. I mean, Aperio is a great example there, but anyway. And, and by the way, you mentioned uh, financials and demand. Uh, we have to just acknowledge the product looks very good. It looks does look good. Yeah, yeah I mean, the dashboards actually look okay. Really yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a hell of a lot better than it was a few months ago. And I mean, you know, give SAP credit. Um, he demmed it to you. He demmed, uh, on a, uh, he demmed it to me last night on a yep. crappy Wi-Fi connection. Mm -hmm. yep. Hannah, Hannah Power, boom. And on this Wi-Fi, if it's working nice, that's, that's, <laughs> totally that's got to be changed. Yeah. Something. Absolutely. So you know, sub-second response times, boom, love it. Absolutely yep. love yep. it. Yep. And, and and just just close the point about by design. Um, also, the recognition that there is a momentum going on in by design. Maybe not in the momentum from a development perspective or, or or SAP, but market market is 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 it has an acceptance, has a demand for by design. So I think if you look one year from now, or maybe Sapphire. I think we're going to have a different conversation about by design. I, not saying it's going to change night to day. I'm just mm -hmm. saying I think things are changing and going towards a, a, a good direction. Well, for me as a partner. Let me ask you the question, though, Leo. I mean, you, you, you run it for your own business, right? Yes. And you sell it, right? Okay. What, what is the market saying to you about it? The market showing interest. I have actually, I'm in a point right now where I have a pipeline that I have to stuff up and in and, and, and problem capacity. So it's, it's Really, there is an interest in the market, and I think it's that product is very relevant. Right. Really relevant. But also from a, um, an implementer standpoint, I mean, is there enough money in it for you uh, in terms of things like custom development to make it worthwhile? Yes, yes. Um, as I, I mentioned this in the past, I think uh, we, in this process we discovered that there is more custom development yeah. and more service revenue yeah. than we initially expected. Well, you were also saying, right, that this summer the, the SDK access that you're that you got really helped you in terms of the possibility of selling by design because now 
as, as a partner you're able to do the last mile development pieces that allow you to make the solution relevant for your customers. Is that basically how you're feeling still? Exactly. On one of the last sales uh, uh, cycle meetings that we had with a customer, we're going exactly through the pain points, uh, pain points that had identified three or four gaps and then looking with some SAP, actually, um, uh, Reiner was there, it was, was great, and was saying, ah, this can be done with that small SDK. This one, I would recommend you not to do, so it will be a gap that you leave. Right. But you know, addressing two or three, you may have a, a deal closed, so that's enough. Right.